morning, my friend. Hi. Good evening. Green right. salutations, my dear friend. Oh, no, you're on the couch again. Does that mean your back hurts? Um, I've been in, in pain pretty much all week. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a whole thing. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll hear about it when I come see you next week. No. Um, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, my brain's been hijacked a little bit by MS. So if I <laughs> don't know what I'm talking about tonight, that's why. No. <laughs> so um anyway. I don't have an MS excuse if my brain's messed up. It's because you have a three year old excuse <laughs> <laughs> and a full time job and another full time job and a dog and a oh, yeah, you're single mom of all that. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you're doing it all yourself. Um, so yeah, um, hi, welcome. <laughs> What are we doing? Fat Friday. Thousand Pound Sisters. See? Told you. My brain's been hijacked a little bit. Um, um, it's yeah, anyway. Thousand pound sisters. Let's just get get to it. We're trying to catch up. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a double episode today, season five, episode five. Supersized. Yeah, the custardy battle. <laughs> custardy battle. I'm like, custard sounds pretty damn good right now. Custard. <laughs> I ate a donut today for the first time in a while. I just wow. ate a donut. Your body even... go into shock from all the sugar? No, surprisingly. It was a, what do you call it? Boston cream. Anywho, mm, talking about custard and delicious. things spilled in the middle. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, so previously we see Misty and Amanda both had weight loss surgery Caleb gains 37 pounds in rehab and Amy finds out that Michael was actually the first person to file for a divorce when she left her lawyer's office. So yeah. Amy's at the courthouse for her official first court date for the divorce. And um, we find out that Amanda had divorced uh, Amy's, I'm sorry, Michael's brother a year ago. Right, which we actually knew this already, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, it it was wasn't like a big. They didn't make a big thing of it, but they did mention it, like, sort of offhand a time or two. So mm -hmm. we knew this already that she was already divorcing, like that they had been married. Like we learned it last season or the season before. I can't remember. Yeah, it was like two seasons before, but I yeah. don't know the timing's off because I was like, oh, well, it was only a year ago, but then I remember they film it like weirdly. Like I don't even know when it was filmed. So right, right. <laughs> And we find out that Michael wants joint custody, even though he doesn't do anything. Now, oh my God. So this motherfucker, <laughs> who apparently has supervised visitation at the moment, which obviously there's a story there that we don't know. <laughs> why yeah. that that was why it was granted a supervised visitation. Like like what happened, you know, th that that was the default before the custody hearing versus the other way around. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so first of all, like red flag there. Um, but also like him asking for 50-50 custody and him actually doing 50-50 custody are two totally separate things. Like I think he's flexing right now. Like he's got oh, a, yeah. like he's got a lawyer that's representing him probably pro bono in this shit or whatever. And um you know, thinks they're going to get all like Amy's money or access. To, I don't know. Who knows what what the hell their the thing is? But I think that he's just trying to flex because you know that motherfucker doesn't actually want hundred percent. He, I mean, he doesn't want any custody. He doesn't want any percentage because if he did, he would have been a parent while they were together. Like right. that would like if that if he actually wanted a parent, we wouldn't be in divorce court. Exactly. <laughs> if he wanted a parent fifty percent of the time, I think Amy would have taken that during their marriage. Right, you know it's I mean? funny too. That's what always happens when you know other people get divorced and stuff. All of a sudden, all these men want fifty fifty. Suddenly, they're filing, asking for, "Oh, I'm the best parent in the world out there," and they're right. <laughs> like, "Oh, really? child support." <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Although I don't know Kentucky's laws with that, but yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, uh, it's try to get out of child support, I guess. I think, yeah, I think that's the main reason, right? I would think some of less. these, these douchebags, some of the douchebags that do it, do this, um, you know, so they can get out of, you know, paying, you know, they pay less child support or whatever. If they have more custody, it's less child support, but like, I can't, I just can't. I know. It's your child. I know. <laughs> <Your> child. <laughs> Uh yep. yeah, and then the name he goes on to say it's like either her taking care of the kids or it's his mom. So it's one of those things where like is his mom enabling him or is she doing it because obviously she loves her grandkids, but that's neither here nor there. Or both. Well, yeah. Yeah, or both. I mean, there could be both, but you know, it's like he's asking for 50-50 custody, but he's not gonna be the one watching them when he has his 50%. It's gonna be his mom. Right. Because he's not capable of doing it. So, like, no. why is he asking for it? He's too bad. He's too busy playing with his little video games. You and like your a child. video games. Rage, rage, rage. <laughs> the rage room was funny. Rage room. Yeah. <laughs> Amy says uh, she's the nanny, the chef, everything while he's the video game player. And then she goes, he's lying through his teeth, but he ain't got none. I know. And she said Glenn has, Glenn has two teeth. And he has two more teeth than his daddy does. Got more teeth than his daddy does. <laughs> I was dying. Dying. I was and laughing. then and then Chris with what toothless and bald in Kentucky is a, new, a dating profile. <laughs> what a dating app, yeah. <laughs> like that's perfect. Oh my god. Well, of course they did not um, actually come to an agreement, so they have to go back in a month. But um, we do learn that Michael chose not to appear and comment on the show after that. So my guess is he's done being on the show. He doesn't want anything to do with it, probably. Right, probably because he doesn't get paid. I don't know. Who knows? He probably knows he's a piece of shit and doesn't want the world to see anything else. Yeah, he is a piece of shit. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I literally typed after this, Tammy is vacuuming, and I typed it all in caps with ex- exclamation marks after i know right she i was, was like, like you get a girl having a real life yes you know um, here's something that's interesting and and maybe i'll get into it i don't know when i'll when it'll come up but okay so i went and rewatched the last three episodes right including the most recent one right mm-hmm. so i watched these three episodes back to back to back right and what I realized in it that it's all three exactly the same episode. Okay. So it's Amy losing her shit saying I'm done, but in different locations. Okay. So mm-hmm. this episode, she does it in her house, right? Cause we get into the, where she finds the wedding dress, she loses her shit and all of that. Right. Doesn't mm-hmm. that happen in this episode? Um, it's like a mild form of, she cries, but not, I wouldn't say losing her shit in that part, but. So then the next episode, she loses her shit in wherever it is. I forget. Everything's blending together. It's all blending together. And then the The last one is in Florida. But it's all the same thing. Oh, the gym. She was Mm -hmm. at the gym. Losing her shit at the gym. Like, um... I, 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 it, it's like a, the story editors are bothering me on this because it's like, I feel like these episodes should be building... Like, okay, they're building, Amy's clearly losing her shit, and each episode is supposed to build on the other, and then, like, there's a big blow-up, and then there's resolution or whatever, but it doesn't feel like they're building on each other. It's just, like, it's, like, the same level of tension Mm -hmm. in each episode, and it's, like, nothing's being advanced in the (laughs) storyline. I'm just, like, waiting for somebody to step in and be like, hey, we got you a mental health professional, because at this point... I'm just like watching it deteriorate the family trying to jump in. And I'm like, this woman needs help. Like she needs actual like help. Yeah. Seriously. Like, like yeah. For real help. Yeah. I mean, like she's, obviously she's happy and everything's good now in real, real time now, like we're, yeah. we're lifetime now versus when this was being filmed. But yeah, I'm hoping that that's like, there's an intervention of some sort coming up. <laughs> yeah, seriously. There was a time that I needed help and I didn't know I needed help, but I basically reached out to a friend and she like found a therapist for me. And I was like, thank you. Like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I needed that, but I'm like, I feel like somebody needs to step in and be like. And I feel like they're trying in the way that they know how, which is their like hillbilly way. They know how, you know? Right. Well, that's all I'm like. 
fucking TLC, man. Somebody at the production needs to step in. Like, yeah, because I, those kids, I, you know, right? Those poor children are being exposed to the drama and the sadness and the anger and the rage. Well, and, and they're at risk. I mean, quite frankly, they're at risk mm-hmm. with Amy being the way that she is. I mean, through no fault of her own. I'm not, right. there's no, there, there's, it's just that she needs to be removed, removed from those children right now. Like, the, the her sisters need to take those kids away and separate them for a moment because, like, that's not forcing her to, like, go, they're your kids, go be a mom or whatever. That's not going to teach her how to be a mom in that moment. They're in a crisis moment right, right. now. That's not what needs to happen. She needs parenting lessons. She needs all of this stuff. And we can get into this a little bit more as we get further. Um, so anyway, yeah. let's get on with the recap and then yeah. we'll, go, we'll go more into it. <laughs> so back to the vacuuming and then candle making. They're making like garlic scented candles. I was like, what the fuck? That, oh, that's yeah. Because cool, she's, she was craving garlic scent while she was pregnant. So she's like, let's make candles. What are you going to do? I mean, that's not a terrible idea. <laughs> and, I mean, people are selling farts in jars online. So I guess, <laughs> I guess candle, garlic candles is, a, is an upgrade <laughs> from that. Uh, Amy burned the tablecloth. Tammy's little Walmart sunflower tablecloth. Doll- was- okay, Walmart, no, that was Dollar Tree. That was Dollar General. Oh, was it? That was straight was Dollar su- General. It was sunflowers. Do you think Caleb got it for her? Oh my God, she has sunflowers all over that house in a way that, like, word art sunflowers exploded. It's mm-hmm. like it's like a Dollar Tree exploded on in the summer. Exploded on her on her walls. <laughs> Which you know what, like. God bless her, like, and her taste. I'll just say that. It's a very hillbilly taste. But <laughs> God bless her. She's living in a house that she gets to decorate, and she's doing the damn thing, right? Like, she is doing okay, the damn thing, yep. Go for it. Go, You go, girl. But, like, oh, sweetie, you know. And why can't they fix their teeth? It's expensive. Like, why it, why is that so not a priority? Expensive. But why is that not a priority? They're spending money on doing other things. Well, production's why is, why probably is, paying for the other things. They're they're going to like rage rooms and they're doing all this other stuff, right? Like that's because TLC's paying for that. Why can't they do something for their teeth? Their front. I think teeth. they need to partner up with some cosmetic dentists because, I mean, shit. I told you, I have one dental implant, mm-hmm. one implant that would probably cost me almost six grand through all the yeah, oh yeah, for one. You're I've talking got, about veneers and all kinds of. I've shit. got a bridge. I've got uh, crowns and an implant yeah most of my teeth are not my own <laughs> in my mouth <laughs> yeah my mom, i get it i get mom. it but like i feel like a cosmetics dentist could fix that like super easy and quick like just just a little like little front like fix you know what i mean like dentures maybe I, yeah maybe dentures implants i don't know but like they don't have front teeth like I feel like that's health wise bad. I feel like that's a bad thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's not the same thing as like my half a molar that's cracked, broken in the back. Like that's not the same yeah. thing. It doesn't impact my ability to chew or eat or look at the world. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, like I will, maybe there that that'll be on like their list of things to do. Because I, I feel look- like that would be an excellent. TLC like they said makeover the show or just like a you know one of their producer excursions right like they sent him to get quail eggs and, and sushi right like mm-hmm. oh this will be a good adventure to film them getting their teeth fixed yeah so, that would be cool Stacey, who went to turkey to get their teeth done oh my god <laughs> you know what I mean I anyway like t- sorry wait. no it's on a tangent <laughs> but um, I digress well- well, Tammy and Caleb are FaceTiming and she says she feels like Caleb is hiding something from her. And he tells her on FaceTime that he's struggling with eating and that he was actually in the hospital. So she didn't even know he went to the hospital. Oh, by the way, right. <laughs> he's in the hospital for right. some days or whatever. How do you not tell your spouse? It doesn't make any sense because he's like so infatuated with her, but he's not well, going to communicate that with well, her. It's I don't think it's not true love, right? Like it, they're infatuated. They're they're like in lust with each other and infatuated that they love each other. They love the idea of it, I think, because you can see this as the episode progresses and the next episode when um but this one really was when she goes to visit him, right? Right. 
and you saw the awkwardness and how like she's just like all he wants to do is tell me he loves me which is great but like we can't have a real conversation <laughs> yeah What's i'm wrong I s- and it's like she she's outgrown him already i mean i have a lot of issues with her behavior over this next course of episodes because of the way she treats him i have a lot of issues with him but uh, at the same time i also like i don't know Anyway. Well, I started reading on like trauma bonding and stuff. So I'm reading Attached by Amir Levine, Dr. Amir Levine, which if you're listening is an amazing freaking book. Okay. So it's going to help you even if you're in a relationship, not a relationship, like learning about attachment theories and anywho, there's definitely trauma bonding between the two of them. And I feel like for sure, she's like you said, she's growing out of it and he's not there. Like he's not at the same place. Right. Like they, I mean... She's kind they of pulling about back. It. So the the what? She's like pulling back. Like yeah, she's like well, uncomfortable. Okay, so so they're they're both food addicts, right? So they met basically in rehab, right? A sober living house is essentially the equivalent of what they were living in, right? It's a place to house the people, right? Um, it, it's up to you whether you do you know stay on the straight and narrow it's like it's up to them what they eat and stuff but the place houses them and takes care of their you know basic needs and stuff and that's like a sober living house so it's like these two met in rehab their own rehab but they met in rehab she got sober and he didn't and now she's being all sanctimonious as shit about it and he's still living in the sober living house like getting high with his buds Mm -hmm. um you know and she's going to like meetings and you know hanging out with you know fellowshipping with with sober people and things like that and and trying to do you know doing her thing and she's like why aren't you sober yet why aren't you sober yet and it's like there's just the 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 i get it i mean like she's like i did it you can do it too but the her approach is like i feel like i mean i've seen it thousands of times in in my own life this is what happens. People addicts get together in rehab and then one gets sober and one doesn't. And this is what happens. One is moving forward and growing as a human, and the other one is not because they're stuck in their active addiction and they're not ready to get sober yet or whatever. And I feel like that's the exact situation that you have here. You know, she's she's made that switch. She's had uh-huh. that light come on for her and he hasn't. And he's just like, well, you know, it's fine if you're do it in a controlled way, which. Like, what? Well, the thing is too, the difference between a sober house and this is like, I feel like there's a lot more resources in a sober house because I don't know what kind of education they're getting. Yeah. I don't know if they're getting dietary recommendations. I don't know if they're getting therapy. Well, they don't, they're getting like, a lot of sober living houses don't have that stuff either. But they have like group meetings and like no, not necessarily. I'm talking about just the ones that are just houses. They have like okay. They have like basic rules and like chores and stuff you have to do. But it's basically more just like it's 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 literally just a sober living house. It's not gotcha. It's not like a rehab doesn't have programs. Yeah, doesn't have any of that. Like you can go, you go. I mean, they support each other and they support programs and Mm -hmm. they you know have resource people available sometimes, but. I've seen a lot of sober living houses that don't, you know, there's like a yeah. house manager type of thing. And I mean, I've had sponsees go out on, you know, start drinking again, living, yeah. in sober living houses and stuff. It's not, they're just like, I mean, like-minded people, you know, can all sort of be, you know, you kind of have the resources. I mean, it, and it depends obviously, but I, that's kind of what I liken it to. Right. And, mm-hmm in that regard not like a rehab like when i so so when i when i did my treatment i lived in a sober living house that was affiliated with the rehab center that i was going to so they like transported us to and from the rehab but they weren't the rehab Mm -hmm. they housed us and Mm -hmm. transported us around right so they didn't provide programming to us, but they gave us the access to the programming. Like they, right. they were the liaison, like, and while we're, you know, to take us to the program and stuff like that. Yeah. The fact that Caleb could just have junk food just sitting out and like not exercise if he didn't want to is just like frustrating to me because I'm like, these people need help. Like they need serious help. And like, is our medical system so fucked up that like, they can't get the proper yeah. help. I don't yeah. know. It I mean, really obviously, is that like, fucked it, up. 
he needs to step up and do it on his own too i'm not saying that there's no self but, like, like to have a doctor like dr smith help you right because see in in this case so like i think so like with with tammy you know he facilitated like hey here's a place you can stay but he worked with her the program she was working was through him right exactly he had the nutritionist he had all the stuff yeah the nutritionist therapist all of that stuff the other place was a place that you could live you know the whatever the place the rehab is a place where she could live and they have the facilities she can make the choices on the healthy food that she chooses versus not healthy food, you know, and door dashing mm-hmm. mozzarella sticks, fried mushrooms, all the things I love. I'm like, oh, <laughs> fried mushrooms, <laughs> mozzarella sticks. Like, oh, I could go for a fried mushroom right now. <laughs> I could go for some pizza with that. Mm. <laughs> yep. Well, Tammy wants Caleb to experience rewards. Sorry, I thought she said it. I know that was so funny. The <laughs> rewards. And she wants to head back up to the rehab center to motivate him to get back on track. Um, then we go through this whole scene of Chris buying a chicken coop because of eggs and being expensive and and that whole thing. I'm glad that they I think that that trend has passed, but I still will say it like the idea that people were buying chickens and like, I'm going to raise chickens because prices of eggs are so expensive. It's like, do you not realize that the cost of raising chickens is more expensive than the extra few dollars it's going to be for your eggs for this (laughs) temporary time? Like, like what about that? Uh, Anyway. And then he doesn't even buy the right thing. He buys a fucking rabbit hutch. He buys a, like a Timu or whatever. What's that website? Timu. Oh, really? like, a wish.com. <laughs> like you're one. getting a chicken coop, but in reality, you get like a freaking mice a mouse, <laughs> <a> mouse <laughs> house. <laughs> For real. For real. Uh, well, this scene really got me. Uh, Tammy goes to Amy's OBGYN to see if she's healthy and if she can conceive. Because originally she said she didn't want to have children, but now that she's lost all the weight and she's really motivated, she's actually excited and wants to conceive at some point. Because it might be a possibility for her now, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't before. So, yeah. The last time she was at an OBGYN office was in 2011. Mm -hmm. And that's when she got her IUD. And I literally just got an IUD yesterday. So (laughs) I was thinking about it. I did a lot of research on it, obviously, because I was getting one. But I was just Uh like, holy shit. It's been since 2011. Like, I, my last IUD I think I had in for like six years, but that's like what it's supposed to be. Yeah. (laughs) Like, (laughs) yep. And then I Uh, found out when they were, she was taking it out and replacing it. She's going to take that one out, put a new one in. She found out that the one that I'd had in wasn't even in right. It was like the little, you know, like the things stick out and it's uh supposed to go in and then pop out. Well, it just went in. It never, they never put it in far enough for it to pop out. So it was just sitting in my cervix the whole time. How did they not see that? Because I got it done at uh, Crippler in Hawaii, which is the military hospital, the army hospital. Oh, it's Tripler. Sorry. Tripler army medical, whatever it's called. And we called it Crippler (laughs) for a reason. (laughs) Um, That I think I still have like PTSD from that. Um, insertion because it was like it's a teaching hospital which i'm all for you know come have everybody look up in my hoo-ha if it helps them whatever yeah yeah hoo-ha situation can help teach a new doctor something go ahead look at my hoo-ha i don't care but these people had never put one in before so <gasps> and i had to be i have to be dilated right because my cervix isn't open so they have to manually dilate me right put it in and this intern had never done it before and i realized somebody's always got to be the first um but it was me <laughs> and it then then they ultimately had to end up throwing that one away because it got not sterile at some point and they had to go get another device and then the attending who's like 75 years old is the one who ended up putting it in and they messed up while teaching the other guy how to do it that's crazy i don't know who That's was crazy what i just know that it was it took forever and it was ridiculous and it was painful it was awful yeah that was not fun i totally yeah. get it the biopsy no. <laughs> so <laughs> but then i went and got another one with a perfectly capable OBGYN who i love in this area so 
Yep. It's almost like barbaric in some ways. I don't know how much it hurt. Like, yeah, whatever. Oh, whew. yeah. She, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, <Anywho>. we digress. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, Fraudcasters, I'm here raving about my Skims bras again. Yes, you know, they used to be the first thing that I took off when I got home, but Skims completely changed all that. I absolutely love their bras, and they just continuously keep delivering. They are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support that they give, but what I wasn't expecting was how comfortable they are. Even the underwire bras that I'm wearing all day, I barely even notice it. It's definitely not the first thing I take off when I come home anymore. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear and bras for everybody. My favorite is the Fits Everybody t-shirt bra. And I've been raving about this bra since the first one I got. And now I have them in so many colors. And it is literally the only bra that I wear out of the house. The straps are adjustable and the Fits Everybody material is obviously the best for all day comfort. Skims bras are made with innovative technology to give you the best shape and support. Plus, every bra is designed with the comfiest and softest materials, so you'll feel like you're wearing nothing at all. Skims offers a complete system of bra solutions for every need and every style. Skims bras are available now in 62 sizes, from a 30A to a 46H. So believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims bras are now available at skims.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75. And if you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. And if you're looking for a gift for your Valentine or just yourself, Skims just launched their best Valentine's Day shop ever, also available at skims.com. Hey, fraudcasters. Everyone loves a good family mystery, especially one with as many twists and turns as June's journey. Step into the role of June Parker and search for hidden clues to uncover the mystery of her sister's murder. Engage in observation skills to quickly uncover key pieces of information that lead to chapters of mystery, danger, and romance. Where will each new chapter take you? Find the hidden clues and uncover the murder mystery. Solve mind-teasing mysteries of the Roaring Twenties and search for hidden objects in the parlors of New York to the sidewalks of Paris. You can customize your very own luxurious estate island and escape reality and immerse yourself in the world of June Parker. You guys, I love this game for my brain breaks in between uh, when I need a work break or just when I'm uh, waiting outside uh, school pickup. This is what my go to game has been. And I just love solving the little mysteries. Can you crack the case? Download June's Journey for free today in iOS or Android. Hey, Fraudcasters. I'm here to talk about Factor Meals again. Yes, I love my Factor Meals. That's factormeals.com slash broadcast50. Get started on your resolutions with Factor so you are ready for the new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, the prep work, the cooking fatigue, all of that nonsense. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and so much more. You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions for when I'm too busy to cook and frankly just don't want to cook, they also help me stay on top of my goals. With their offerings like Protein Plus and Keto, I can stay on track. This is definitely going to come in handy for my New Year goals and they can help you too. Factor has everything I need for a week of flavorful, completely nutritious eats. In addition to the ready-to-eat meals, they have cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, which is what I love, veggie sides, and way more to keep me energized during this kind of a frantic time. Head to factormeals.com slash broadcast50 and use code broadcast50 to get 50% off. That's code broadcast50 at factormeals.com slash broadcast50 to get 50% off. And now back to the broadcast. So they weigh Tammy at the doctor's office and um, she was previously 420. And at the doctor's office, she weighed 374.6 pounds, which is great. 
Okay, so she lost a lot of weight in just a short amount of time. I can't remember five weeks ago. So it's five weeks at Dr. Mm-hmm. Smith's office. She was 420. Yeah. And she said it's been since middle school since she was that small. It's unreal. Unreal. Like yeah. it's just it's so great. So great to see. And of course, Amy's doctor's like, Do you want to get on the scale? She's like, No. She's no. Like, Hell no. <laughs> yep. Um, so <laughs> Tammy's IUD should have been taken out in 2016. And Amy was laughing, going, It's it's got permanent residence. It ain't coming out. You're not not gonna kick it out now. It's like, nope, I live here now. (laughs) It's like absorbed into your body. Right. Um, so then the doctor's like kind of asking about Tammy and her sex life, which I was like laughing about because she was like, I'm handy capable. Are you sexually active? No, I just lie there. Yeah. Uh, he's evil. they make it work make she it said, work there's no way his wee wee is getting in her hoo-ha though Mm-mm. no i don't think his will probably works i don't Maybe know it if, does. yeah mm, yeah i don't know there's no way that thing is getting in her, in her hoo-ha though so i don't know how she thinks there was any sperm deposited up near her cooter anywhere yeah I mean, there's sperm all over that pillow that she brought him, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. (laughs) Probably a hole in the pillow. Mm. She said she doesn't remember the last time she had a period and that there's a slight chance she could be pregnant. And she said she's craving weird things like water. (laughs) Amy's like, bitch, you ain't pregnant, you're thirsty. Right? Like, the look on the... I mean, clearly this whole scene... The, the the particular phraseology used by everybody was done at the producer's request because mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a slight chance I may be pregnant now. No, because the way she went on to further explain it, like it, it wasn't really a chance she might be pregnant. You know what I mean? Like right. you know, further explain it, but you get that sound bite, you can use it on a clip and make everybody think, oh my God, is Tammy pregnant? And let's watch it. The doctor's face was priceless. Like I could yes. see her just trying to hold it together. Mm-hmm. But, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> how that works. <laughs> like, you, I'm sorry, you've been your IED since when? Oh, okay, 2011. Oh, okay. Tammy and Chris are uh, leaving to go see Caleb. And she doesn't think Caleb's being honest about his weight loss because she's been where he was. So she knows the lies, the manipulation, the she knows what it's like on his side of the, the of things. Um, While they're doing that, Misty, Amanda, and Amy are heading back to the house to get clothes. So apparently Michael moved in with his mom temporarily, and Amy's been living with Tammy, so the house has been kind of empty. But then there was trash in the trash cans. I noticed weird things outside, so I'm like, somebody's staying there. Yeah. Yeah, this whole scene was just like weird. Okay, like, let's go to the house so you can get stuff. Okay. They're being there, like, makes you feel like some kind of type of way. Okay, I get that, but... I feel like you should be, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know which house is bigger, but maybe Tammy's house is bigger and that's why they're there versus over at this house. But clearly this whole scene is manufactured for the purpose of like, oh, let's go get clothes for the us and the boys. And oh, boy, howdy, here's my wedding dress. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's, no, just right. no. Yep, yep. And while the, she, Amy's in the house, she says that there's a lot of happy memories here, but the negative memories outweigh the positive. I was like, damn. It's like, oh, yeah. Really bad. So then she starts bawling. You're so proud it's, of that house, too, being able to buy it. I know. It's yeah. Remember how they, they moved out of, like, the roach-infested house? Yeah. And well, they the, did the, all the things. The duplex that they lived in with next to Tammy. Yes. <laughs> and moved it and then moved into when they were, she was so, like, being able to, like, buy the house was so important to her, you know? Mm-hmm. I think they need like a thousand pound compound. Like the whole family just needs to move into like some sort of big house. farm out back for Chris. And <laughs> yeah. Like kind of like little people, big world where they just start adding on houses on the property. I don't oh, know. Is that what they do? <laughs> I you probably know. Have you never seen that show? I haven't uh, seen it since like the first season. And I was like, oh, I do not like this family at all. <laughs> Father is yeah. annoying. And mom was like, no i don't like there's nothing redeeming i didn't like anything about him gotcha well amy starts bawling when she sees the wedding dress as you know you mentioned yes stupid 
And then we cut back to Tammy and Chris at the rehab center. So Tammy says it's been almost two months since she's since she's seen Caleb in person. And then they slowly are like wheeling towards each other, like slow motion, like in a movie. You mean like like music, you know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm. Caleb brings Tammy flowers and shocker, their sunflowers. <laughs> yeah. Sunflower, sunflower. I love you, my sunflower. <laughs> Did you memorize the poem? I didn't Can memorize the poem. All I know is of sunflower, sunflower. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's more I than memorized I memorized it so I could recite it to myself in the evening to, you know, remind myself of the, the love that I don't have from Caleb. <laughs> I'm going to start saying it to you next time I see you in person. Yeah. Am I your sunflower? You're my sunflower. Oh. <laughs> you are my sunflower. <laughs> So Caleb's complimenting Tammy and telling her how much he missed her. And this is what we talked about earlier, where she was just sitting there looking like silent, uncomfortable. Awkward. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like Caleb's like, I'm going to wait. Shadowing her leaving him. <laughs> yep. Um, Caleb says he wants to weigh himself in front of her to show her his progress. But then he's nervous about it. So he weighed 424.6 pounds, which means he's down from 537. So he lost 12.5 pounds, which is not a lot in the time. I don't remember how long. Wasn't it, was. it also like a, a gain? He had gained weight originally. So he gained up to 537. Yeah. And then that's when they had the conversation where she was like upset and worried about him. So then he only lost 12.5 pounds okay, okay. from the time they had that combo, which at his weight, he should be dropping weight like mad crazy. He should have lost yeah. 12 pounds in a day, probably. Right, right. But uh, that, so um, that screenshot that I sent you. Yes. Was right when he was about to step on the scale. <laughs> and I was oh, like, that's what that was. Such a good pause point. The way their eyes were, it looked like they were almost looking at you through the TV screen. Yeah. I was like, ooh, that's kind of creepy. Yeah. So she, Tammy basically tells him to try a little harder in therapy. <laughs> which I remember her family telling her to do. Yeah. So this is where I go back to her sanctimonious shit, right? Like, I, I don't blame her at all because when you're... when there's a certain level of like being on this side of it and you're like i want everybody to do oh you can do it i know you can it's like oh my god it's right here just reach out we you know mm -hmm. and and you want to just pull them over that line and you know this you know this from your family experience with addiction right but like if they're in the act of addiction they're not going to come with you no. right and nope. so she's trying so hard, but she's doing it all wrong. Like, go try harder in therapy. Like, I get it. But that's like somebody telling me, like, oh, so just don't drink. Right. Oh, oh right. okay. <laughs> I'll just. <laughs> why hadn't I thought of that? Oh, okay. Uh, stop I, eating. Don't drink. <laughs> I just should have stopped drinking all those years ago. That's right. <laughs> if anything, it probably would trigger for me. I don't know. I can't speak for you, but like, I feel like that's almost more triggering to tell you to just like stop. Like, yeah. Because stop makes, smoking. I I want a cigarette more now. I mean, I yeah, it yet, makes so. me want to drink at you. Right. Like you, you want me to stop? Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going right. to drink more just because of that. Because you know that makes sense. But that's how addicts think, right? That's how we think because mm -hmm. our thinking is jacked up, right? And that's what needs to be fixed. And that's what you need therapy and all the other shit for. And he's clearly not working any of his programs or doing any of his shit because he's like doing his stuff or whatever he's giving lip service to his therapy not trying hard or whatever but then going and buying his snacks right right which i mean i have mad respect for a box of snacks in your room because i mean that's like my dream right there i love having a box of snacks in my room <laughs> but again i'm a raging alcoholic i have no boundaries with <laughs> moderation i don't know how this works so i'm just you know i'm not a healthy example of it or anything but <laughs> um that's funny. I mean, yeah. it's not funny you're raging alcohol. I'm just saying it's well, funny. It is, it is. It's funny that you can laugh about it and <laughs> be yourself, you know? Yeah. Be who you are. I mean, it is, it's part of who I am. And there, there shouldn't be a stigma about mm -hmm. it. You know? If somebody doesn't give, I don't have a stigma against somebody, oh, you caught cancer. Right. 
well, okay, go. Good luck pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. Oh, yeah, you know, just stop existing in the human and just heal, yeah. just, just get better, right? Okay, all right, go. Like, no, it doesn't Addiction work. Addiction so misunderstood it is. For, for a lot of people. I think it's like, yeah, it's sad. And the thing that Tammy's not doing is, or at least we don't see it. Of course, we're seeing edits and small clips, but yeah, she's not really setting boundaries and limitations. So she's not. She's being she's not healed she's enough right. to, to be staging an intervention for somebody that she loves mm-hmm. or quote unquote loves. You know what I mean? Like she she's not a professional to get it. And and she there's nobody better to help us than another addict, but her approach is not helpful at all. Yeah. And and it's clearly not helping him. And it's not healthy for either one of them. Uh, to be honest, that's why you're not supposed to have rehab romances. <laughs> like you're mm-hmm. not you're not in a place to get into a relationship. Like you're broke. Like not you're you're not broken, but you're like you're in rehab. Like do yeah, it. <laughs> it's not real life. That's why they never should have gotten married. You're mm-hmm. not in the real world. Like you're right. not living life and having those experiences you're literally in rehab trying to get better and you are eating yourself to death because you have no other coping skills and you have a lot of trauma and healing to do in your your existence and how your coping mechanisms and you need to learn that stuff and you need to figure out how to life on your own without your addiction um you don't need to be (laughs) complicating all that with relationships i mean to each his own obviously right but you know, mm-hmm. I don't know, just like meeting in rehab. And yeah, I mean, I've seen it. I mean, I've seen it work, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I, I've got to be honest. I've seen it work the other, I, positively, too. So, um, you know, I'll throw that out there. But but that's what. Yeah, she's she's on one side of it. And he's just not there yet. And mm-hmm. her approach isn't working. So, yep. Anyway. Well, Tammy got Caleb a pillow of her face to cuddle with at night. And, and he uh, says it's gonna be wet <laughs> yeah with kisses i was like yeah 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 sure, with kisses Ew. and he's like you nasty <laughs> oh my god and then we talked about the snacks already and tammy's like i'm fat i can smell the snacks <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> uh so caleb says he feels like shit because he can't be there for tammy so it's easier to eat a bunch of junk food to cope and so uh, we just understandable about right mm-hmm. easier to t- drown a bottle of uh wine than to cope too but <laughs> yeah. guess what uh caleb says his weight is a burden in most of his relationships and friendships and tammy told caleb that it's life or death and it's serious so caleb says he's gonna fight hard to get home to tammy and that's the end of the episode yeah so see how's that working out for you tam tam nope oh. all right we'll be right back after this break and we'll move on to the next episode okay and we're back season five episode six fried cried and tried <laughs> uh, we're back to tammy and caleb talking at the rehab center and him saying he's gonna get his shit together so he can come home and see her and then Sam is like, well, you got to throw away all the junk food. So they do that. That was a whole scene. It was they kinda... do a whole like excising the demons or some <laughs> shit. Like, okay. All right. 20 bucks says he went back through the trash can after the game. <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. Like 100% he went back in for those cookies. Because I oh, would. Yeah. I would have too. No judgment. Yeah. What did you like on Sex in the City when that one time when Miranda was like throwing away the cake? That, so she wouldn't eat it and she had to like pour soap all over it in the trash so that she wouldn't reach back in that's actually a really good like, idea i feel that in my soul <laughs> like that's... i get that as an addict i get that <laughs> damn that cake must have been good anyhow <laughs> well amanda says it's been we're back to Amanda. Yes, it's been six weeks since she left Michael. Amy, I'm sorry. I just wrote A. <laughs> Amy says it's been six weeks since she left Michael and she can't eat or sleep. You know, she's just discombobulated. And she decided to destroy her wedding dress with paint, water, and spray guns. 
Oh, Amy. You should have was... a bingo square for how many times Amy trips over stuff. Yeah. You want to play bingo. Sorry, just throwing that out there. Um, so when she pulled this out, I was like, oh, she's going to do a trash the dress. That's a fun, you know, you put your dress on and you like roll around in mud and dirt and do whatever. And some people get it photographed and it was a whole thing back in the early aughts. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um and um, all the people who had like their Maggie Satara dresses back in 2000, they're all like tra- doing trash the desk photography sessions later. Cause like, I don't know why, I, but whatever, to each your own. Anyway, so I was very excited for something like that that we were going to get. And then Amy's trash the dress session was like, oh, okay. It was it like the like Dollar Tree egg. version. What? It looked like an Easter egg, like like Easter dress colors, like pastel yeah. pinks and blues. There was nothing therapeutic about their gentle ass water guns and stuff like you needed to like hurl some stuff like combine the rage room and the paint <laughs> and the dress <laughs> i mean they're like light it on fire shoot at it you're in kentucky i'm sure they've got guns right i'm like I put it on roll around in the mud and the dirt rip it apart you know like make it therapeutic <laughs> yeah she looks so like unsatisfied yeah yeah, i was very unsatisfied as a viewer going oh that's really disappointing Mm -hmm. (laughs) but then amanda is holding the gun and she's like you you should always assume we are packing and not just snacks (laughs) while holding the squirt gun and i'm like oh my god i always have snacks (laughs) i always have snacks i'm always packing snacks (laughs) oh it's funny Mm. Uh, protein bars or something <laughs> i've got something around usually <laughs> nice yeah yeah i'm bad with that i need to yeah and that as your kid gets older your snacks will change exactly that like you care you won't be carrying goldfish and cheerios or whatever she eats you know yeah no i don't give her whatever that trees and leaves yeah. and bark you give her that she, <laughs> she pulls out of her pocket and snacks on <laughs> that'll change as she gets older <laughs> Uh, so we find out that amanda can't say halterman right apparently i mean uh amy can't oh, say halterman right halterman. oh it sounds like she's called halterman halterman <laughs> which i guess it doesn't matter anymore since she's divorcing him Maybe yeah. him back, <laughs> who, the, but... who the fuck cares anymore are you changing your name back slayton 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 mm-hmm well we go back to the rehab center and this is the scene where caleb tries to have a real date night with tammy oh god with a rose and the candlelight dinner aka tea lights tea lights he gives her a present which is like a collage of pictures of them and she looks just so unenthused and so just like she so warm. does not want to be any part of this <laughs> and on my mind i'm looking at her and i'm thinking she's already broken up with him in her head yeah oh for sure 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah she does not look thrilled yeah <laughs> she's like oh yeah no being back with him just confirms that being away from him was better <laughs> mm-hmm. and we already talked about all the delicious fried foods he pulled out and what really concerned me was like it didn't dawn on him like this is not a good idea no i mean like you're literally filming a show about losing weight about what it's like to live at that size and you think it's okay to order all this fried food that is like shows you exactly where he's at Mm -hmm. in comparison to where she's at right like that is the guy who guy i went to rehab with that was in my in my little small group Mm -hmm. the day we finished our the first 30 day inpatient because i i did a a 30 day inpatient then i did 30 day outpatient and just a slight change of program and he did the 30 day and then he was going to go home but the 30 day when he graduated guess what he did drink he went out and drank fell down busted his face open oh he went out to celebrate graduating rehab by getting drunk yep that's what you have that's what you have with with caleb yeah. You have the same thing. And he's like, but if you do it in a controlled environment, which is the equivalent of a heroin addict, oh, yeah, I'm going to go shoot heroin like a gentleman. Like, that's yeah. not how it works. You don't just, like, sip a, a shot, you know, an injection of heroin, you know, every third Friday with the boys at the club. Like, that's not how it works. Right. You right. Know? <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
Um, Tammy said that clearly his food addiction is worse than she thought it was based on that whole interaction. And then Caitlin's like, he know he let her down. It should have been obvious. I feel torn apart that yeah. I let her down. And I'm like, okay. Just shows you where he at he yeah. is in his Sad. journey. And yeah. And then when they're saying their goodbyes, this is where I was like, you can tell. She's like, well, you know, it was a good visit. It could have gone worse or better. It could have gone worse. Like, okay. <laughs> I suppose everything could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> And then she brings up the good one. This is where I'm finally like, okay, she's really starting to, you know, look inside herself and see things as they were and just like reflect on her decisions because she said that she can't do the work for him. And now she knows how everyone in her family felt when she wouldn't do right and wouldn't lose weight. And so she's reflecting back on how she was. She was at the spot that he's at now. Mm -hmm. Just different pages, like you said. Yeah. She's like, and then you, you've got Amy um, being like, bitch, like a snack box, like that was you, like all of this, like I get it, I get where she's coming from, but I, but if or but Tammy, like no, <laughs> mm-hmm. pot calling the kettle black, like yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see Amy and Tammy when she gets back into town, taking the l- little boys to the indoor playground to tire them out. So Amy trips over a turtle. This is like the third fall she's had in the two episodes. Well, she's blind, half blind. Like, what <laughs> What are you going to do? You know? <laughs> I can relate to her. I trip over shit all the time. So same, I'm like, oh. same. Me. I mean, you know me. <laughs> As one of my primary treating providers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amy's talking about uh, Tammy's cheat days. They're talking about eating or whatever. She's like, your cheat days turned into cheat years, bitch. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> God, I love their banter. And they're just hilarious to us. Um, yeah, so then they're playing whatever. Fine. Great scene. Nice. And then we go back to Chris hosting a party. And when we're now at a party for the Kentucky Derby. Oh. This was crazy. So this like had potential, but again, I felt a little too much producer hand in it. It had potential to be like, oh, let's do the whole family, Chris being funny and silly. Like, let's do a couple scenes like that, right? Like, yeah. those have played well for them. But I think they're overdoing it because they did it with the chicken coop rabbit hutch scene. And they're doing it now with this. And this whole party fell completely flat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, they weren't really into it. And the kids weren't there. Like, what? Like, it was felt very forced and staged despite oh, amy being lazy but go ahead. Late, amy wasn't even probably lazy she was just like done with the production probably <laughs> she's done with everything yeah so yeah so chris had them like yeah. decorate hats for the kentucky derby as you know ladies wear hats big big fancy hats um theirs look like dollar store straw hats that you'd and wear they barely decorated them like yeah. clearly it was yeah this was clearly a very haphazard Production in turn went to Dollar Tree to round up some some art supplies so they could throw this thing together real quick and some stick horses, you know, like I had really great potential with their whole family if it was like a genuine all of their family gathering, because I think it would have been hilarious. Mm-hmm. But but no. And then they had those little toys, little horse you know, the, the stick horses that you, like, ride as a kid. The stick horses, the hobby <laughs> horses. Yeah, the hobby horses. And they had a, a relay race, which that's when Amy decided to just not participate. Mm-hmm. And a, a, Tammy's still too big to do it, so Chris was a little disappointed she wasn't relaying in her wheelchair with the horse <laughs> somehow between her legs. Yeah, <laughs> and then the ones who were doing it, it was like completely unenthusiastic and then except poor Brittany, poor Brittany, sweet, uh, bless her heart, Brittany. I know, she's so sweet. She's trying so hard. She's just having fun. <laughs> she didn't give mm. a fuck. She's just, oh. Brittany I, and her always wearing a skirt. You notice this, right? You yes. Know, she, in her headband, she's, mm-hmm. there's two things this woman is committed to. It's her headband and the Lord. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why she wears the skirts. <laughs> Everything is yeah. a skirt with her everything i thought for sure her and amanda would win because amanda's like six foot tall i thought her stride her horse stride would be larger but But amanda didn't go back 
Oh. Remember? That was part of why the whole thing was stupid was because, like, they didn't even follow the right rules. It was like, Chris went there and back, but Amanda just went there. And Amanda's oh, sitting there right, right, right. going, you don't go back. You just go one way. <laughs> I zoned out. <laughs> yeah, because the whole was thing so was ridiculous. I had to watch the episode. This was like the third time maybe I watched the episode. <laughs> hmm Yep. Ah, uh, anyway. So then the family is discussing how they can get into shape before going on a family vacation that they have yet to determine where they're going. Um, and Amy says she's down for anything but yoga. She starts talking about doggy style. And then she's like, I mean, downward facing dog. Not doggy style. That is a different kind of exercise. Different, different kind. Yeah. So they go and do Zumba because apparently it's 2000 and one again <laughs> i have no have you done zoom but i've never done it before i've never done it it was like i mean i remember when it came in and when it went out mm -hmm. and apparently it's still in in kentucky i don't know yeah so they go to do zumba all right fun whatever mm -hmm. amy throws her fit and they're talking about flying and how they're going to get to florida for their vacation oh so right 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 tammy's right. like uh i'm scared to fly but i'll do it and amy was like i will not fly I will drive down. And they're like, how the fuck are you going to drive down? You can't see, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so. <laughs> well, we learned in the next episode how that happens. So. <laughs> yeah. Tammy goes, now Amy's the bitch and I'm the calm one. <laughs> <laughs> right? So true. Uh, so in the Zumba class, I was like really proud of Tammy to see her up and actually. Oh, yeah. Thing. She and was, was like, enjoying it. It's like she's got rhythm. Look at her go. Look at her. Yeah, go. she was having a blast. She's just rocking it there, standing up out of her chair and everything. Yeah. Then the instructor was like, All right, that was our warm up. And I felt that in my soul from every <laughs> exercise I've ever done. Like the beach body workouts, I'll do the warm ups. I'll be done. I'm like, Okay, I'm done. That's enough. <laughs> uh, but then Amy leaves the room, the exercise room, and she's crying, sitting in the middle of the floor of the gym. So, of course, her family members come out to talk to her, and then they all sit around a table, and Amy is, like, talking about how she hasn't had a poop in two weeks. And you said, oh, my God, I have a patient just like you. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> and her name is Katrina. Yeah, right, Katrina? <laughs> and I gave you some Chinese herbs. Yes, and now I'm shitting every morning. Ah, yes. Yeah, I know. It's so fantastic. I love like it. Like, I get up and I have a morning poo like a normal person. I'm like, what is this? It warms my heart to hear that you're pooping. <laughs> but, but yes, for everybody, they're, they're making this huge deal. Let's see, and maybe I needed to see this, too, because I'm watching this and I'm like, oh, she hasn't gone in two weeks, whatever. That's normal for me, too. And... <laughs> and everyone's like oh my god that's really not healthy that's just not safe that's not healthy <laughs> i'm like should i be more concerned i'm like no, i have a gastroenterologist it's fine it's fine it's all fine <laughs> yep <laughs> mm -hmm. i think I it was have, like i just have ms it's, it's fine <laughs> oh i think it was like amy's excuse now i mean not the not pooping for two weeks but the whole my tummy hurts i don't want to mm -hmm. work out i think it was just her excuse to stop and like right you know just step away and then that's when the family starts to not like gang up on her but they they start off kind of nice and then it gets pretty strong and heavy when they say like you're not taking care of yourself like are you wearing your CPAP and they're explaining to her why she needs to wear a CPAP like but uh, this is not the right time because she just doesn't want to hear it yeah like, I mean I don't blame them necessarily because this is again Amy breaking down and freaking out and doing this thing. And they're like, okay, well, we've talked to you about this before. Are you taking yeah. your meds? Uh, Are you sleeping? And we know you're not doing this. And I can't sleep because of the boys. Well, no, you're not. It's not just the boys. You're also not wearing your CPAP, which means you're not getting proper sleep. You, Lexi, as somebody who wears the CPAP, yeah. knows the difference in the kind of sleep you get between the CPAP and not sleep CPAP. Of course, she's not getting any quality sleep. And she was. And she's not, if she's not taking meds, whatever meds she's supposed to be taking, you know, she's not taking those. Like, of course. Yeah. You know, she's not eating right now. Everything. Yeah. And we all, we all go through these things, yes. ups and downs with we our lives. We all and, do. And We've she's all lucky. been where Amy is. Yeah. She's lucky she has family that cares about her. Yes. That's 100%. trying to, trying to talk to her. It's just like trying to talk to a depressed person and give them advice is sometimes like talking to a wall in some ways yeah. if they're not ready to hear it. 
But well, it's like they were this- having two different conversations. You know, Amy's sitting there going, I was sick. Why why do I get why are you guys railing on me for being sick? I don't rail on you guys for being sick. But to them, they're not seeing it that way. No, we're railing on you because you're you need to pull your head out of your ass and fucking do something. Right. Like, hello, wake up. Like, we get it. You you know, you've been in this place. We get it. But you're not coming out and you're getting worse. So yeah. you need to start pulling yourself up. Right. So they're getting that. So, But she's not ready to hear it. Right. That that collision hasn't happened. So she's having this conversation. They're having that conversation. And it's just. Yeah. Not and then, of course, Chris decides anything. to make a joke. And he's like, we know Amy's full of shit from the top of her head to her feet, which is funny. I'm sorry, that's funny. It is. She's it is constipated, funny. but n- not the right time. <laughs> so <laughs> then she storms off into the van outside, and she's like talking about how I'm done. I'm gonna throw this microphone. <laughs> you don't take it. Blah blah blah. Yeah. It was reminiscent of my um my uh freak out breakdown i had at the pet store <laughs> right before christmas <laughs> i was like i'm done i'm done just throw everything and walk out of the room <laughs> you told me about that yep. yeah yeah we, we've all been there we've all, we've been, all there. been there we have all been there <laughs> and then chris says to tammy or i'm sorry chris says to amy like hey what's gonna happen if if something happens to you with with the boys like the, your boys need you uh <sighs> yeah an important conversation to have with her as well because well i think once she realizes that connection she would she'll get her head out of wraps yeah honestly i think that's the connection she needs to make she's not making that connection she's not realizing she's not taking care of herself right she just is like in survival mode yeah exactly so she doesn't realize that she's letting all these other things go she's just in complete crisis survival mode right now and so she's not seeing that what she's doing could be detrimental to the boys. And I think once she makes that connection, she'll get her head out of her ass Mm -hmm. because of how much she wants for those boys. Definitely. And Tammy's like, I know how she feels because I've been there with like the depression and everything Mm -hmm. going on. So that was kind of the end of the episode. We see a little preview of the rest of the season and we see Amy getting spray tanned. Definitely production. Uh, we see the family vacation starting with Tammy on the beach. So finally, Tammy gets to go to the beach for the first time ever. And we see Tammy on a boat, which I never would have thought I would have seen. Never would have thought. Uh, uh, all of that is their vacation is the most recent episode that just aired. And we're going to be getting that episode to you guys in a separate episode than this podcast episode. But we're going to get that one to you as well. So mm-hmm. we're just, you know, we're trying to catch up from our winter and you know sickness and all of the things that happen in my work stuff that you know is almost done almost done this this crazy work project um is almost done nice so um yeah so we're trying to catch up on all those episodes and um hey do us a favor if you like us go give us a review please or just give us a five star it doesn't matter like whatever just give us a five star that'd be great you know I haven't asked in a while. Maybe, maybe it'll do some good this time. I don't know. (laughs) Love you guys. Anyway, that's it. That's it. That's all we got. Thanks. Bye.